All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Austin's hiding because we're in a special location today oh. and he doesn't want to get bullied by Tesla owners. Yeah. So um, I've decided to finally drive down from Edmonton and try out the Tesla chargers on a non-Tesla vehicle, which is our Kia, which charges at a top speed of 76 kilowatt. It's going to be fun to see if it actually works. So um, that's the charger. We're downtown. Um, just to tell you guys how it all worked with getting here and pre-conditioning the battery through actual road trips. So we are get, we drove one, 267 kilometers. Average consumption was pretty good, almost 21 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers and it took us 2 hours 36 minutes to get here. Um, my little thing is on the fritz, the, the, the um, what do you call it, uh, my phone for, for checking the battery for, uh, internally is not working today, I'm not sure why. But anyways, uh, we are here, we're going to try to charge. We've never done this before, we set up the app and we'll see if it works. And hopefully don't get bullied by Tesla owners. Alright, because this is the only Magic Dock enabled Tesla supercharger in Western Canada. Even BC doesn't have it, as far as this recording, if you watch it in the future and they have it again, that's in the future. But for now, this is the only one. All right. So anyways, let, let's get out and, and try to um, plug in and see how this all works. I have downloaded the Tesla app. Let me just show you guys here. So I've downloaded the Tesla app. Um, and basically how it looks is you choose your charging location, which is here, Calgary. And then you just push charge here. Make sure to have all of your... Um, you know, uh, uh, credit card set up and all that payment ready, right? Um, so let's click charge here and see what happens. Okay, get started, unlock adapter, start charging, stop charging. There's a button, okay. I guess I'm gonna try to do this one-handed here. All right, so then you have to choose where it is that you are. I am 3D. So 3D is this one, and then we push to unlock adapter. So then obviously we open that and let's see if the adapter is unlocked. All right, push the handle into the dock, then pull out to remove, okay? Ah, there we go. So that goes in. And then what's next? After you plug in, it may take up to two minutes to start charging. Okay, fair enough. Obviously, te oh, I heard it lock in. So obviously, Tesla superchargers don't have screens or whatever payment, do uh, payment uh, uh, terminals. So let's see, we get into the car and see what ha what's going on. Okay, we are charging. What are we getting? 51. <laughs> so we're at 14%, 51 um, kilowatt. Is that awesome? I'm not sure. Um, let's see what the app says. Cause, ooh, look at that. The app is telling us um, the consumption, well not consumption, how much it, kilowatt hours it has delivered, our current uh, charging percentage, and how fast are we charging. And then of course the stop charging button, and then the total cost. So yeah, it is kind of expensive here um, to charge. I'm not going to tell you guys how much yet. Um, oh, now, well, you can see <laughs> one kilowatt hour is 80 cents, which is super duper expensive. But yeah, 51 is pretty far away from 76. That's the most I ever got on Electrify, um, uh, on Electrify Canada. So anyways, let it sit here for a little bit and then we will see if um, it speeds up or not. Now I turned off the HVAC just to see if there's any difference. Usually there isn't. I've done tests with this car on many different chargers. And yeah, just as predicted, um, no difference whatsoever, still 53 kilowatt going into the battery. So not lightning speeds, definitely. All right, let's have a little quick look again at the whole setup. So it's a very, very small adapter actually. 
So if this is the future, um, if this is what Kia and all the other manufacturers that have CCS is gonna give us to be able to charge on any supercharger, I'm fine with that. Obviously, it would be nice if they retrofit every single charger, but I'm guessing not so much. Anyway, the setup is quite good. Um, there are some destination chargers over there that I had a look at. Let me uh, walk over. Ooh, that's a J1772 connector. So that's why this Audi is able to charge here. Boom, pretty simple. So they have a dual setup. So you have a black and then you have a white. So white is a Tesla connector and black is the J1772 connector. So they have how many posts? One, two, three, four, five, six, six times two is 12. And obviously we have a Model X, some Model 3s, another Model Y, Model 3, and then the Audi. This is pretty good. I mean, if you come to work in downtown Calgary, or if you live in any of these buildings here, and you drive a Tesla or a regular car, then you will be able to to charge so here electric vehicle charging and here tesla vehicle charging so that's the difference and then here of course we have all the tesla chargers so we've got 12 of them which is nice to have this is a brand new installation I'm not sure why they decided to uh to add magic dock here and still has haven't changed the signs which is tesla charging only uh, should be all the vehicles that are electric right not just teslas but anyways so far so good at least there are no faults and it keeps on charging and if you guys are charging your car that's not a tesla and it takes forever like for us don't worry you've got premium portable washrooms just right here cars charging here and you can take a poop right there Anyways, let's uh, go for a little walk because it's going to take forever to charge our Kia. So this whole area here, it's called Pixel Park. And I guess that's the pixels. I don't know. They look like pixels. Yeah. And then the little dots on the, on the road here. And then more pixels. And then green pixels. And then look at this. Level up your slam dunk skills and paddle what showdowns all right so yeah pixel park there you go that's the name and you've got a nice court austin says it's pretty good right looks pretty good yeah looks like they invested some money here yeah oh one up oh and they got a skate park with some kids what is this a tennis court oh pickleball Okay, so yeah, if you, if you come charging and you don't drive a Tesla and it's gonna take a while, like for the Kia, you can bring a basketball, you can bring picket ball. Picket ball. What is it called? Pickle ball. Pickle ball. Why is it called pickle ball? Is, it, is there something to do with pickles? Or I'm just old and I don't know. Probably I'm old and I don't know. That game's made for old people. So maybe I should start playing it. No. Austin says it's for old people, so I should start. Okay, let's uh, walk around and see what else is here. And if you come with your furry friend, there's a dog park. Wow. Wowzers. Yeah, so there you go. You charge your Tesla or other electric vehicle and you are able to take your dog out for a little brief walk. It's quite nice, actually. And it's got a little fire hydrant in there, too. Yeah, very nice. Now, this is the highest we've ever seen. 78, 78. I have never seen more than 76, 77. So I'm not sure what uh, Tesla is cooking up here, but uh, yeah, 78 is the highest I have ever seen. So now we know 100% battery was too cold. And obviously if I could precondition, oh, 79. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw. If I could precondition this battery uh, while I was driving, then I would have gotten much faster speeds. So, yeah, I guess it, the battery was way too cold. 79. I wonder if we can hit 80. That, that would just be amazing. All right, uh, we have now reached 80%. Time to get out, unplug, 
and then uh, later on you guys need to wait for my summary and find out how much exactly this all costs from going from 14% to 80% in a Kia Soul EV on a Tesla supercharger. So here we are, we are done charging. So it said to push this button here, that will release everything and then that will stop charging. So let's see if that happens. Yeah, not bad. So let's have a look at this unit before I put it back in. Very, very small, very tiny. Um, that's your CCS side. That is obviously an ACS Tesla side, but it works well. And then, yeah, it goes up in here and then just slots in. And then here is your Tesla connector for regular Tesla cars. Such an ingenious idea to do it this way, I guess. Um, simply because always the easiest solutions work the best way and to retrofit existing chargers with this would be awesome or just sell us a adapter that we can use all right so that's it charge has been completed we are finally back home um it was a long drive back but we made it safe and sound so I figure I'll give you a quick uh, summary of my charging experience with the Magic Dock system and a Tesla supercharger. So overall, I think um, it was quite good. I mean, my downfall here was that I arrived at the supercharger with a very cold battery, which is understandable in these vehicles like my Kia Soul EV that don't have battery preconditioning, right? So. There's no way to prepare that battery for fast charging, so it was what it was. However, once it came to temperature, we were getting the speeds, heck, even beyond what I expected to get out of this car. So generally, I'm very happy. So um, to get the best picture of what it is capable of doing, I would say I would probably have to come back in the summer with a warm battery and see the difference between what I experience now during winter and what the re reality would be during the summer. What was also great was the whole system uh, where you just drive up, um, choose the charger on the app, um, unplug the magic dock, plug it into your car. Uh, starting to charge took a little bit. The handshake was a bit longer than I've experienced with other providers like Electrify Canada, for example. But overall, it was quite good and quite easy. Um, just make sure you read the app. It does tell you which stations, if there are any that are out of service. So just pull up to the ones that are free and, and, and obviously working that day. The biggest one is um, charging port location, I would say. For me, I didn't have that problem because my port is located at the front of the car. So it's easy pull in as you would with a Tesla. The charger cable is long enough to plug in and charge. But then, you know, there are people with chargers on the sides of the car, right? In the front, left, right, um, like the Taycans, the Audis, right? Some have it on, um, you know, the right-hand side back of the car, right? Um, some have it, you know, in other weird uh, places. So um, there is no consistency. Um, all Teslas have the same location. That's why the superchargers were built in, the, in this way. Um, but other um, users will have to take up multiple stalls to just be able to plug in safely, right? Um, so that's the, that's the biggest drawback. So if, it, you know, we're talking about our NACS future where manufacturers are going to have the NACS connector and we're going to be using superchargers, these cables are too short. Um, the locations of the ports, I don't know. Somebody has to come and say, hey, how about we do it like we do with gas tanks, either right or left, whatever, choose one. Obviously, it would be best to have it on the left-hand side, just like the Teslas do, so you can just pull in and charge. So that's the biggest drawback, um, that when this is open to everyone, it's not going to cater to everyone in the same way. And finally, the biggest drawback is the price. Um, so just to get it right, I'm going to pull it up here. So uh, we took in 48.15 kilowatt hours. Okay. The cost before taxes is 80 cents per kilowatt hour. So the total with taxes here in Alberta was a whopping $38.52 Canadian. Now I'll put it in how much would that be in American dollars. 
Um, so obviously the, the price is very expensive, but I'm guessing you pay extra for premium electricity from a Tesla supercharger. I don't know. Um, yeah, it just seems steep, right? Um, I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen with other providers because, for example, Electrify Canada is going to be switching soon to kilowatt uh, hour billing as well. We'll see what their prices are like, but I don't think that they're going to charge us 80 cents. Now, you can go ahead and pay for membership, which, um, you know, is how much? $16.99 a month, okay? $16.99 a month, and then you get a lower price per kilowatt hour, but they don't tell me actually how much lower it is. Now, it would make sense if there were more superchargers open, but for me, the closest one is in Calgary, two and a half hours away, so honestly, no point in paying for a membership I will never use. So yeah, the biggest question mark here is pricing. Now, is this what's going to happen in our NACS future? Are superchargers going to be super expensive? Then in that case, I hope that other charging providers like, for example, ChargePoint, Flow, where I'm right now, topping up, um, Electrify Canada are going to jump on the NACS bandwagon, offer cheaper charging, but that reliability that comes from a supercharger. Now, that's going to be the biggest thing. I think like paying 80 cents is good when it's super reliable. My first experience was perfect, right? Like there's no problems. I hooked up and it started charging. But will it always be like this? I don't know. So anyway, in conclusion, um, what did I think? I think it's a great system. It works really well on Tesla. So it works really well on um, cars like mine that are um, CCS capable vehicles with the Magic Dock adapter. There is, there's nothing negative I can say about that. However, the price and the limited number of stations that are currently open to non-Tesla vehicles make it hard to recommend. Unless you want to try it out for the novelty, um, just to be able to charge on a Tesla supercharger, something that was never available to us, then go ahead and do it. Would I say, hey, go out of your way to charge there? I would say don't. Um, there are better, cheaper options, um, you know, available out there that's going to give you the same thing for much less money. So there you go. We'll see what happens in the future. This is the first one in Western Canada that has opened even before British Columbia. So there we go. Um, Alberta is getting something before BC in terms of EV infrastructure. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Let's, let's play it by ear, see in the future what will happen and, and how all of this progresses and see if the network will become as robust for us as it is for the Tesla owners right now. But anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. If you like the video, make sure you like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. All right, take care. Bye.